you know who this is? This is the bamboo orchid, Arundina graminifolia. It's a type of orchid that uh, actually is invasive and grows wild in our area here in the Puna district of the island of Hawaii. We have a wet tropical climate here and as you can imagine it's a good environment for orchids. Now this particular orchid is not native and it's invasive which means that it quickly spirals out of hand and to see what that means let me show you. So this is the bot this is where the flowers come and actually this orchid leans over and this is it. So it's leaning down almost to the floor, whereas the top comes up over here, maybe about four feet. So it like grows, 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 and then it got too top heavy, and then it fell over. And in case you're wondering what invasive means, this is all it. This is it, this is it, this is it. Here are some more pieces. This whole thicket, this is all this type of orchid. I can show you. They make one little flower at the tip. Don't mind these water collection buckets. It's not anything gross. And they continue. See, you can see their flowers. Their pink and white flowers up there. As you may admit, as you may be able to tell, I'm tilting the camera up. That's because these orchids are much taller than me. Uh, they're regularly 10 feet tall, 12 feet tall. At that point, they start to get top heavy and they lean over. That's how big these orchids get. These are their seed pods. After the flower, they uh, make this pod and there's a bunch of teeny weeny little seeds in there. And when it shakes, all the seeds fly out show you this one looks like it's just maybe opening oh yeah there you go you can see look at all those seeds wow let's do a, a, a live action blowing experiment So that's how it gets everywhere. It has multiple ways of reproducing though. This one, this plant, it also can make these little buds at the tip. So see this? This is a whole other plant. It's a clone, it's a copy, because it's uh, this is what they call vegetative reproduction as opposed to seed-based. And so it gets energy, the baby plant gets energy from the stalk, even sometimes when it's dead, it'll still get some energy from the stalk, but at any point it can also very quickly come right off and this is actually a complete plant in itself, this baby. So if something happens, if some kind of, see this little, this big part, that's like its root ball. They also make more of themselves from a single area, so you'll often find them in these like really big thickets where they quickly take over. As you can see, there's one, there's one, there's one, here's some, here's some. And so what I'm, I mean, I, so these are all, you have a little babies coming off. So it can do both. It'll make these babies, it'll make a flower, and it'll reproduce in clumps. So even if you like, you know, break it a little or if it gets damaged like that, all of these babies can actually survive. And they can go from this. If if I put this on the ground, it'll make three new it'll make three copies of itself. And why are why are we talking about orchids? I mean orchids are really cool, but also, and I'm a big fan of them, they have a little bit of a, a mystical association for many people, like, oh orchid, that's something special, that's something fancy. They require some special treatment, some uh, 
some specific conditions and you have to be very delicate with them because if they're not at like humidity 70 percent within the temperature range 68 fahrenheit to 72 fahrenheit only you know sometimes if you read instructions about how to care for orchids it says stuff like that and i just want to tell people actually in their own environments orchids are extremely hardy to the point where they're a little <laughs> they can be really difficult to get rid of actually and uh where was i looking here chopped did a little bit of chopping of these orchids using them as green mulch chair for this banana banana and uh they were buried in here and like other mulch came on i chopped a whole bunch of them here but there were ones that i found where i did like this chop and drop and they had those younger ones on them and just being buried under other mulch the younger ones were completely green growing even from a dead one of these even from a dead stalk I can't find them now. I should have put them aside <laughs> yesterday. Not prepared. So anyway, and they can grow on bare rock. That's their thing. Or did I put them over here? Maybe I put them over here. They can grow on bare rock. They kind of fall apart easily. And terrible soil. This isn't really even soil. This is just... Um, it's like roots, basically. In our area, we're on a Pahoehoe lava flow. And that means that it's about, what, like 500, 700 years old? And soil takes a really long time to, to grow. So, uh, to build up. Because it's all about organic matter that falls and then it has to get processed and then get passion fruit, liliquoi. Um, so the point is here we have our soil profile is zero to four inches of organic layer soil and below that it's rock. This is the rock, okay? That's what we're dealing with. And most of that zero to four inches of organic isn't actually what you might consider soil. It's a very thick mat of roots and Primarily roots. Sometimes it's mud. And orchids are great. They don't care. So here's the lava. Okay. And you've got your plants like, you know, grass and stuff like that. That grows there. And you can just rip it up and peel back this moss. And as you can see, it's like a rug. See? So that's what we're, that's what we're dealing with here. Oh, it's a red ant nest. Death to y'all, red ants. Okay, you get the picture. It's like moss on top of rock. And right here, here are the orchids. They just simply don't care. They are not fussy at all. Oh, it gets a little bit deeper here. Maybe like an inch. There we go. So here's the roots of this orchid. It's about, I don't know, a couple feet tall. So you see, they just kind of hang out on the rock. They just need to be covered a little bit and then they'll do great. Just completely great. They don't care about full sun, nothing. And they're so tough. It's so hard to kill them. I mean, I guess you could use pesticide, but we don't mess with that. So that's just one example of how hardy orchids can be. I'm taking to show you another one. Okay, check out this dead tree. You see how on the trunk right here, there's something growing, there's some leaves. That's right, that's a vanilla orchid climbing desperately up to the top of this dead tree, blasted by sun, wind, no soil, but it's like, no, this is where I want to go. Vanilla orchids, vanillas are orchids, and they enjoy a good climb. I have a close-up here. So here's another vanilla vine, and it is climbing up 
this live oak here, which I didn't necessarily want, so I redirected it onto this wild guava, and it's still, that's its tip. See? It's still trying to climb. So tree type orchids that like to live in trees, they're called epiphytes, which is a generic term. It refers to anything that grows on a tree. It's not actually harming the tree. It's just hugging very tightly. This is its root. And it has every segment. It can make like a leaf and some root. And actually each one of these segments can be its own plant. So if I like do a snip here, a snip here, and lay this down under some moss or something, it'll make a new plant because it has a leaf, it has a root, and it has this node. If you want to do better survivability, you can have, you know, three, four nodes. And then you're very, very much guaranteed. See, it's an air root, and it climbs and hugs the tree. So you can even cut this vanilla plant in half, and both halves will keep growing, no problem. No problem. And they like to climb. They, usually when people do their own like vanilla plants, they'll set up like stands for them so that they can go up, go down, go up, go down. But we're just doing an au naturel experience here. We don't water this. It just does its thing. I literally set that when I got the cuttings, I set them down in a shady spot and covered them with a little grass and they just went to town. Can cut them in half, they don't care. They'll keep going. And that one over there apparently wants to go into the full sunlight. <laughs> you can see, there's its leaves. Now the last orchid I wanna show you is even more extreme than the others. It lives also in this dead ohia, up this tree. That's our internet. And it's like right there. Let's see if I can really get a... It's in the tree right there. It's a tiny orchid. I didn't plant it. And I have no idea how it came up there, how it came to be there. Let's see, yeah, right there. Do you see that little thing, those little leaves sticking out? That's a little tiny baby orchid. Yep, and these are common in our neighborhood. There's actually another tiny one just like that on the tree I showed you that had the vanilla coming up. How did it get up there? How did it get up there? So my theory is that it actually blew on the wind and settled into like, there's like a little patch of moss. See, Ohias have these like little patches of moss on their bark. So there's a, it's really easy for a, a little tiny, you saw how little those seeds were. It's easy for tiny little seeds to get into there and then take root and do their thing. And they don't, again, they don't, they're not a parasite of the tree. They just sit there and they get, gather their nutrients from the air and from whatever tiny decomposition process is happening in there. So can you imagine, usually tiny, tiny baby plants are considered the most delicate. But here we've got a tiny baby plant way up high in that tree in some of the most difficult conditions for plants around here. Let's see if we can spot it. Yes, I am climbing a ladder to this tree. You're getting action here. to say. I mean, it's the only plant up there, right? None of these other plants are living up there. They're living down here where there's a little more protection from the sun, from the rain, because actually the sun can be too powerful here. And it dries out up there during the day. These plants, the soil is more moist and just lower to the ground. It's more moist because there's more density of plants and whatnot it keeps the sun out a little and lets things stay wet but that orchid doesn't care because orchids are tough this is what it looks like in our area from up high wow wow <laughs> 
So let's think. Do I have any other orchids to show you? We might go ahead and stop it here. Coming down from the ladder. I hope this video has shown you that contrary to popular opinion, orchids are actually tough as nails. And will climb and keep going until they can't keep going anymore. They're in a competitive environment here in the tropical forest because it's very good conditions for everything to live here. And on low soil situations, they do great, which is what we have here. Many plants would have trouble living in, first of all, only zero to four inches of organic, and then with no other real kind of soil, where everything washes away all the time. But you actually often find orchids growing in nutrient-poor environments. Another orchid that we have that grows wild here is called a swamp orchid. I forgot its scientific name. But the name tells you what you need to know, right? And swamps are kind of considered not uh, nutrient-rich environments. There's also the one of the like North American cold-weather orchids. Yes, they exist. It's called the bog orchid, and I've actually seen them. I saw them in a lake in the Sierra, <laughs> in the high Sierra in California. And I was like, oh my god, they're teeny tiny, but they are orchids. And again, they thrive in an area that has not, uh, you know, not the most nutrient-rich environment. But that's where orchids like to grow. And if you think about the fact that they grow in medium or on trees, right? They don't grow in soil. When you like plant your own orchids, they, you know, they grow in medium. And what's medium? It's really just like leaf litter. It's like forest floor mix, right? Which is what these guys grow naturally in. So they don't actually, if you give them two nutrient, this is another type of orchid that grows free, freely here, purple flower. If you give them too too much nutrient, right? Sometimes if you've noticed, it's like, oh, they can't, they don't want that. They like it in conditions that are a little bit more a little less nutrient rich. So thank you for taking this journey with me to the land of the orchids. I hope maybe every time you see an orchid now, you'll think, dang, that's a tough plant, not a little baby plant. Very tough plant. And we'll see you next time. Bye.